Welcome to Shortcut Reviews, where we get right to the point. And today we're going to be looking at the Spyderco Tenacious. This is part of a value family line of Spydercos that there are four in the family that are all named after dystopian movies in which teenage kids save the day. Things like The Ambitious and Persistence and Tenacious and Resilience, I believe. Paramilitary 2 actually has slightly more cutting edge. And the Steel Wheel Cutjack 3.5 inch, which is certainly a competitor in this space at the same price tag, US dollar bill and zebra pen. You can see this is just not an insignificantly sized knife. So let's take a look at it. The first thing is it is made in China, but it is a Spider Co. So you get full factory support, and it is made with the budget 8CR13 MOV steel that most people will be familiar with. Easy to sharpen. Pretty decent corrosion, resistance, okay edge retention, nothing special, but easy to maintain. No huge carbides, so it is easy to sharpen and get a really, really fine edge on it. It's not exactly the Spyderco classic leafy blade, but there is enough height here to get a really great spider hole here, and we'll take a look at that in just a minute. But the first thing we want to take a look at is this tip. It is a full flat ground blade, but you can see they bullnose that tip just like they do on the Delica. So it's not as quite as fine as the paramilitary 2 here, but it does lend it some strength. Spine is well finished. Hole is nice. It's not overly sharp, but sharp enough. The plunge grind goes right to the handle, does not intersect the plunge hole, uh, pun uh, the spider hole, so you don't get that sharp point. Really, really nicely done there. Super useful blade shape. This knife's been around forever, and I believe when it first came out, it had Teflon bushings, but now, I don't know if you can see it, but they are they are bronze now, and so that's nice, and really does make it very smooth deploying knife, and rolls out just really, really nice. It's also really solid. My, my, um, my theory is that there's a lot of metal right here in this height in both the blade and the handle, and it really gives it more side-to-side -side solidity than I'm actually able to get out of the cut jack. If you've ever looked at the inside, they have a track here for the internal stop pin, which removes some metal. Up and down, there's no play. Locks up perfectly. It locks up fully, but there's still some room to wear in. Great access to that gimped liner to get it closed. I mean, really, just well well done there. If we look at it with a flashlight behind it, we can see that they've really skeletonized the snot out of it. Still a heavy knife though, guys. Uh, four ounces, which is uh, on my upper end of weight. Really thick liners. So there's a lot of metal in there. But well executed. It is flow through construction. Three pillars, absolutely undecorated, plain Jane but with nice screws that are flush with the G10. Full lanyard hole that is tubed, runs through the middle of the clip. It is not the same screw pattern as the Delica, but it's still a three screw pattern, which is nice. I actually like three screws. I feel like if I lose one, I'm still not gonna lose the knife. Up, down, right, left, classic hourglass. And this is how much shows. And last but not least, the handle, which is what makes this a little bit unique, is it's bare G10, or natural G10, so it's like bonefish white. And what they do is they, they layer on uh, this net, and somehow I hear it, or glue it to the, to the handle. It's got about the same traction as the Sage 5, so less than the paramilitary 2, but still pretty grippy. And it is the same netting that they do on the Polestar, and what's interesting about this is I actually asked on the Spyderco forum and Sal Glesser is the one who answered me and said, yes, it is the same. And I always find that amazing that he answers so many questions on the forum, is so active there, and has created a really nice place to be. Um, there's very little trolling. Uh, there's just very little abuse of other members. Like, it's just really, it's just a really nice place. So I do suggest you, if you're into Spyderco, check out the Spyderco forum. So thanks for taking this review with me. I actually really like this knife. I like this design. I could certainly see this design done in nicer materials. 
and um, I think it would sell still well. It, it's kind of a classic almost design. I think there is some elephants in the room like the steel wheel. Like I said, it was the same price, totally different construction and materials, but I'll do a making the cut video between those these two for sure. And that was one of the reasons I got the Tenacious was to take a look at how this design is held up over time and what the materials are doing relative to the market today. When this thing launched, this thing was an absolute, like there was just not many other choices. There's so many choices today that I, I was wondering if it still stands out amongst the pack. And so over time, I'll do some head-to-head -head reviews and we'll take a look at how well this classic design has aged. Uh, thanks so much for joining me for the shortcut review. Please subscribe, like, and comment. As most of my subscribers know, I'm trying to improve things like the quality of the video and the audio. So additional comments there are always welcome. And please subscribe. I'm trying to get to 200 and I'll do a giveaway at 200. I'm still working out what that will be. That video will come out shortly um, to, to run a contest. So thanks again and stay sharp. Have a great weekend. And oh, happy Father's Day.